good news is that it's not religiously affiliated. We have, um, I've got two incredible uh, Muslim scholars that have endorsed my book. Um, we have um, Hindu supporters, we have Jewish supporters, we've got several Muslim supporters, several outspoken Muslim supporters. We have incredible gay supporters. Um, we've got transgender supporters because the incredible thing is that when you are standing on the side of natural rights, you actually get to build an incredible coalition when it's not just, hey, here's this thing that Christians are gonna do or here's this thing that Muslims are gonna do. When you say we are going to recognize um, natural law, right? The law that is evident through nature that can be substantiated using social science. Um, what you get is you get an incredible coalition. And, you know, we have a section in chapter four of the book that's coming out on um, why marriage matters. And we talk about how um, it's strange that the five major religions of the world, the Jews, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, and Buddhists, they disagree about the nature of God, the nature of man, the nature of reality, the problem in the world, the solution to the problem, the nature of the afterlife. <laughs> but they all agree on something that resembles man, woman, marriage. organization is called Them Before Us, and it's a nonprofit. Um, and when people say, well, well, you know, what's your goal? And I'm like, it's very simple, a global takeover. We are going to do a global takeover of all conversations about marriage and family, because what happens in every subject, like whether you're talking about divorce, or you're talking about reproductive technologies, or cohabitation, or um, same-sex parenting, or like what anything, anything that has to do with family, those conversations are all obsessively focused on the desires of adults, every single one, whether you're talking policy decisions or personal decisions, what the adults want drive decision making and drives the narrative and drives the headlines so much of the time. Um, and yet, when we get these questions wrong, it is children who suffer every single time. So then before us is a nonprofit um, that defends children's rights to their mother and father. Um, this is a universally recognized right. It is outlined in the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, which every country in the world, except the United States, has signed. Mm -hmm. And so this may be foreign to some American listeners, but for those around the globe, much of this language and this recognition of the right to be known and loved by the two people responsible for your existence is already woven into a lot of their domestic policy. Um, and so what we have found is that when you prioritize them, children before us, adults, you come out with incredible policy. Um, it's a, a template that you can lay over every single um, family structure and come up with a child honoring decision. Um, and and it's, it's great because it's simple in the fact that if you honor children's rights, you get these answers correct. It's difficult in that to put them before us, every adult, every adult must sacrifice, right? It's mm. nobody gets a pass when it comes to children's rights to their mother and father, single, married, gay, straight. Everybody has to accommodate and recognize and conform to the rights of children rather than expecting them to sacrifice so we can live as we please. Wow. Now you definitely have experience. I can see it from just no. <laughs> you. Now let's back up a little bit because you talked about this group, them before us and the main goals of it. You beautifully laid it out. Now, what is this group consisting of in terms of members? Are these religious fanatics? Are these people who are just thumping the Bible? Are they mm. across the spectrum or are they only the religious conservatives? It just sounds like this is something that comes out of my conservative friend group, you know? Yeah, so for sure, there is one very mouthy Baptist pastor's wife who is in this organization. She may or may not be on a call wearing a mustard sweater at this moment, <laughs> but she may or may not be recording this podcast in her husband's office. But the good news is that it's not religiously affiliated. We have, um, I've got two incredible um, Muslim scholars that have endorsed my book. Um, we have um, Hindu supporters. We have Jewish supporters. We've got several Muslim supporters, several outspoken Muslim supporters. We have incredible gay supporters. Um, we've got transgender supporters because the incredible thing is that when you are standing on the side of natural rights, you actually get to build an incredible coalition when it's not just, hey, here's this thing that Christians are gonna do or here's this thing that Muslims are gonna do. 
when you say we are going to recognize um, natural law, right? The law that is evident through nature that can be substantiated using social science. Um, what you get is you get an incredible coalition. And, you know, we have a section in chapter four of the book that's coming out on um, why marriage matters. And we talk about how um, it's strange that the five major religions of the world, the Jews, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, and Buddhists, they disagree about the nature of God, the nature of man, the nature of reality, the problem in the world, the solution to the problem, the nature of the afterlife. <laughs> but they all agree on something that resembles man, woman, marriage, mm. right? All of them recognize that it's a pretty good idea for a man to commit to the woman he's making babies with for life, because that's good for man, woman, child, and all of society. So, so these are issues that have a lot more to do with being human than they do with being Baptist or being Sunni um, or being Jewish or being atheist. Um, and we do have a lot of atheist followers and supporters as well, because again, you know, we're really just looking at human issues and that means all of us can get on board.